Good motion by the Hawkeyes. Jock with a jump shot on the run, and the lane is good. Peter Jock gets the Hawks out on the scoreboard first. Now it's poked away from behind. He comes up with a steal. Jock shooting in transition. And good. Peter Jock, two for two. Wow, he is playing at such a high level, Gary. And I'm going to give him credit for this. Jock. Jock's got one man to beat. Races into the front court. Score it! And a foul call. That is so money. Iowa has its biggest lead to Jock into the front court. Peter Jock. He doesn't know what the rim feels like. The Hawkeyes have now won six of seven Big Ten games by double digits. You know, that's what the great teams do. They go out and they take care of business. I'm really proud of you. That was a good one. We're originally from Sudan, and Sudan has a long history of wars. Life was pretty much all about violence. I was my dad when I was six years old. Um, my little brother was four then, uh, Peter, and things changed from there. I don't really remember a lot about Sudan. Uh, I just remember a little bit about Uganda. After my dad died, we moved to Uganda as refugees. My grandmother, who was then in Iowa, found a sponsor in Des Moines, Iowa, St. Ambrose Cathedral. For the first six months we came to America, they would support us uh, with rent, with food. We came December 9th, 2003, with the clothes that we wore and nothing else. I came across the Jock family via Peter. I was putting together a fourth grade basketball team for my son and was looking for some kids to play basketball. Mike Nixon had an AAU team called the Riders and it was his kid and then a bunch of his friends. He um, came and talked to my mom. He said he wanted me to play for him, but uh, I didn't want to play. My mom and him made me go to a few practices just to see how it is and I hated it. But he took the whole team to McDonald's after that. I fell in love with McDonald's right away. So I was like, you know what, I'm gonna stay on the basketball team. I'm just gonna stay, just eat McDonald's. <laughs> Here Peter's basketball progression started pretty quickly. Peter was named to the All-State basketball team, even only playing or practicing for a couple of weeks. By the end of his fifth grade year, was probably the best player in the state at that point. Eighth grade, that's when I realized I need to take this basketball thing serious because, I mean, it could take me up places I've never been before. He was pretty heavily recruited by the time he was in ninth grade. North Carolina, Duke, KU, ISU, Marquette, Illinois, Iowa State, Iowa, uh, Louisville. A good friend of mine, John Gallagher, the head coach at Hartford, was an assistant at Penn at the time. The day that I was hired, uh, my cell phone is burning up, as you can imagine. I saw John's name come up, so I I said, hey, John, what's up? Peter Jock, you got to get him, was the first thing out of his mouth. He said, well, we just signed his brother here at Penn. He's the number one player in America. And then his career took an interesting turn. His ninth grade year, he was one of the 30 freshman kids in the country that had been invited to the Nike camp in St. Louis. We were scrimmaging, and uh, I tore my patella tendon. And had no idea how significant the recovery process was from that type of an injury basically two years. As soon as I got the surgery, it was like everything just disappeared. A lot of people took back their scholarships. They didn't think I was gonna be the same player anymore. Personally, I was like, it's over. My father's name is Duke Jock. He was a captain in the Sudanese People's Liberation Army. And he said, this is the right thing for me to die for, to liberate South Sudan. It was in the morning, I was helping my dad farm. One of my aunts came and she said that she hadn't seen her son in days. So right away my dad said, go home, I will go look for him. He dropped everything. Um, that's the last time I saw him, you know, walking off. We had about the whole day and around three, two people came, one of them in the front, another one in the back, holding a bed sheet. You know, a stick, holding the front end of the stick and the back end of the stick, and there's a body wrapped in a bed, a bed sheet. When my dad died, 
The consolation was that my whole family, they were saying that he's not dead, that Dao is alive. For them, that's how they mourn, right? So ever since he died, I became my dad to my family. I was little when my dad died, so I mean, I don't, I don't remember a lot about that at all. We never talked about my dad's death, and part of it on my part is intentional. I don't want him to experience that. I want him to live his life. I want him to enjoy his, what I would call innocence, in his childhood. I wouldn't be where I am right now without Doc or Mike Nixon, because they really took the male role for my dad. So growing up, I had to look up to both of them. I think the question about Peter and, and not having his father during those formative years was one that I saw for myself personally. I lost my father when I was 10. And so I understood what some of the things that Peter might be going through. When I found out I had to get a surgery, my brother and Mike, they kept motivating me. I was like, you're gonna get back 100%. It's gonna be a process, but you just gotta keep working hard. There was actually a few schools that stayed loyal to me the whole time. The relationship Peter and Fran developed was built on Fran's loyalty to Peter. Obviously, he had some concerns still about the injury, but he was always loyal to him. The night I went to see him his junior year, it would have been really easy to walk away. I mean, he was bad. But fortunately, I had seen him great. So I knew he had it in him, so that helped me. My senior year, I started feeling better. I was doing stuff that I used to do. We went up to watch him work out. He made every shot. He was dunking the ball again, moving his feet well. We signed him. He goes out and earns Mr. Basketball. So it looked like a brilliant move. Dow played basketball at Penn. Since Fran McCaffrey played at Penn too, Iowa arranged to have a basketball game in which Penn would come to Iowa City to play. You kind of say, wow, right? Looking at where we started, now we're playing in front of 12, 14, 15,000 people. My brother had a heck of a game. I think he missed maybe one shot, or <laughs> maybe he didn't miss at all. Went 0 for 6 or 3. <laughs> um, but what was most neat about that is the Iowa fans. They were cheering for me the whole time, and I always remember that. Unbelievable experience to go watch that game. Peter is able to play college basketball at a high level because people like Mike Nixon. He loved me like his kid, so I know he loves me. I look at him as my second dad. Without him, I would not be where I'm at right now. He told me nothing is easy, but if you just keep working and put your mind where, uh, where you want to go, the sky's the limit. When he first got here, he was good. He was not elite. Now he's elite. Here's John. And after two years of not being able to make shots, finally finding his stroke in his junior season. Any coach, you know, takes a lot of pride in watching a young guy figure it out. It brings me a lot of joy when he's out there having fun, where he's enjoying playing. That's what it's about. We're privileged more than others. There are people that have been through worse things than us, without a doubt. There are some Sudanese who um, went through things that are unimaginable. It makes me more appreciative of where we are. Cutting Pete Jock scores. Clemens in the front court for Giselle. The Jock in the corner. Three. Good by Peter Jock. 